Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, a teenager is shot near a school overnight. Details just ahead. The Delta variant fueling a surge in COVID cases. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington. The latest on the vaccine and booster shots coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're at 76 degrees. We had a pretty hot weekend and we're going to check in with Mike to see what we can expect this week. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday. It is July 26th. And if you found yourself panting like a puppy this weekend, <laughs> you weren't alone. No, you weren't alone. It was pretty hot. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a great weekend. Mike is here. And Mike, you said it would be a return to more normal feeling weather and. But it was not. Believe it or not, we stay. We are uh, officially at the airport. 92 Saturday, 93 yesterday. Normal's 96. But I think just because we're used to having yes. such low temperatures, you know, it felt a lot hotter. And if you were in the direct sun, obviously it was hot. But and one of the reasons is the ground, the moisture, because it take you know that takes a lot of energy to heat that up. But as the ground dries out, we're going to continue to get hotter. So, yeah. Uh, July's going out in style. It's going to feel like summer as we uh, finish up the last week of July and start the new month of August on Sunday. Low clouds hanging around here this morning. Uh, there is some fog down to the east and southeast. LaGrange, pea soup right now, zero visibility. Beeville at just a quarter mile. A uh, hint of it around Gonzales. There was a hint around uh, New Braunfels as well. Just watch out, especially down to the, the southeast this morning. Temperatures, normal low is 75, 77 as of right now. Everybody is on the warm side and the humidity is it's there. It's, uh, it's you know, we're leaning toward mid 70s that going to fog up your glasses when you step outside this morning. Mold is on the moderate side. That should continue to go down as we continue to dry out. 89 at noon, going for 95 for high temperature. That's here in town. There's going to be a lot of upper 90s and then, of course, triple digits off toward the, uh, the Rio Grande Valley. And we've got a you know, last week we were talking about that chance of rain by midweek. There's still a little, I think, glimmer of hope for that. I wouldn't get too excited about it, but these numbers, high temperatures, just going to continue to go up as we go into the future. Details in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, San Antonio police say a 13 year old boy is in the hospital after he was shot last night in a possible drive by shooting. It happened around 11 o'clock at the 1200 block of South Olive. That's just east of downtown near South Hackberry and Aransas Avenue. SAPD says the teen was shot in the shoulder while standing in front of a nearby school. Police say three other people were with the victim during the shooting and were detained for questioning. So far, there is no information on a suspect. San Antonio police say a man is in the hospital this morning after he tried to break into a store on the city's south side. It happened just after 8 last night on Zapata Street, not far from South Process Street and I-37. Police say the store owner showed up and fired two warning gunshots. As the suspect ran, police say he jumped off a fence and broke his leg. He was taken to the hospital. Police say he will be charged with criminal trespass and possessing criminal instruments. This morning, a spike in COVID cases across the country is adding fuel to both the political fight over vaccines and new restrictions. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest on the vaccines and potential booster shots. This morning, new questions about just how long vaccinated people will be protected from COVID-19. The CEO for a company that helped develop the Pfizer vaccine tells the Wall Street Journal that, quote, Antibody levels are dropping seven months after immunization among some vaccine recipients. But he added, quote, most of them will remain protected against severe disease and might not yet need a third dose. Dr. Anthony Fauci is suggesting a booster shot may be needed for people with weaker immune systems. Those are the kind of individuals that if there's going to be a third boost, which might likely happen, will be among first the vulnerable. Thanks to the highly contagious Delta variant, daily COVID infections in the U.S. are up 314 percent since mid-June. The surge coming as summer music festivals return. In Florida, the state is now averaging more than 10,000 cases per day, accounting for one in five infections in the U.S. Even as breakthrough cases emerge, doctors are pleading with people to get the shot, saying nearly every new hospital patient is unvaccinated. All I can say to the public is you don't want to be in this situation. Trust us. Trust us. You don't want to be in the hospital saying, I regret not getting a vaccine. Just. 
do it. And it appears some people are taking the advice. According to the White House, about 790,000 vaccine doses were given over a 24-hour period this weekend, the most in three weeks. And the seven-day average of new vaccinations is up 28 percent. And the former head of the FDA is also providing some optimism. He says the current surge in COVID cases could be over by the end of August, which is much sooner than some models have predicted. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. In Washington, senators are racing to seal a bipartisan infrastructure deal as soon as today. It's make or break week on President Joe Biden's top priority on major roadblock is how much money should go to public transit. Spending on water projects, broadband and other areas remains unsolved. The group's lead Republican negotiator said both sides are about 90 percent of the way there. Senate Democratic Majority Leader Chuck Schumer wants a vote before the August recess. A top Chinese diplomat is blaming the U.S. for the country's strained relationship. America's number two diplomat, Deputy Secretary of State Wendy Sherman, is in China for a two-day visit. This is the second top-level meeting between the two countries since President Joe Biden took office. Expectations are not high for any breakthroughs. In Utah, a massive sandstorm has caused a deadly 20-vehicle crash on I-15 in the central part of the state. At least six motorists are dead and several people are in critical condition after that chain reaction crash. The accident blocked Interstate 15 in both directions. Multiple air and ground ambulances responded to that scene. And time now is 436 and it's about 76 degrees out there. Up next, we'll check in on the Cowboys at camp in Oxnard, California. Plus, a look at the medal count so far for the Tokyo Olympic Games. And taking a look outside with the live cam was just getting used to it being July this weekend with the hotter temperatures. We'll be checking in with Mike later on. Camping with KZAT, powered by Davis Law Firm. An unexpected moment in Cowboys training camp this weekend as three-time Super Bowl champ Troy Aikman dropped in for a visit. He was there to see owner Jerry Jones in a conversation that lasted most of practice in the training camp tower. Aikman was asked if he thought Dak Prescott's ankle will hold up this coming season. Whether or not he has any soreness or anything like that following these workouts, uh, I don't know. I mean, he'll have to answer that. But uh, the hits are the hits. There, there's not. He knows it's uh, whether or not it's 100% and it can hold up. And like I said, I mean, he's got a lot in there. He's got some steel rods and a plate and everything else. So um, he may break his leg, but it won't be where the break was last year. <laughs> Many of us remember when former Cowboys coach Jimmy Johnson was told he was going to be in the Hall of Fame and the tears shed by his quarterbacks as he watched from the broadcast booth. Two paired to win two of the three Super Bowl titles in the 90s. And now Aikman will present Johnson in the Hall of Fame ceremonies just days away in Canton. Meanwhile, Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy was winding up his daily briefing with the media when he was interrupted by a loud blast of music from fans who had arrived for this weekend's practice. Today's NFL with the pandemic and the COVID protocols, all those things. So um, this is clearly the highest amount of administrative responsibility. All right. Did I get to go now? Right. So, um, yeah, yeah, they got, you saw that, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. But, all right. All right. I think we're done, right? Thank you. And that's a wrap. <laughs> McCarthy out. Here's a look at the Cowboys schedule this week. Players have today off tomorrow through Thursday. They'll practice from 1 to 3 p.m. Here's a look at the Olympic medal count so far in Tokyo. The U.S. trailing China and Japan. We have four gold, two silver, and four bronze for a total of 10 medals. Notable items this morning. Team USA men's basketball saw their 25-game Olympic win streak ended by the French, 83-76. In swimming, the U.S. men win gold in the 4x100 free relay. However, in women's swimming, Australia's top swimmer chased down the U.S.'s Katie Ledecky and captured gold with the second fastest time in history. Ledecky settled for the silver this time with the fourth fastest time ever recorded. And that is, again, a wrap-up of the Olympics thus far. Very good. Good news, bad news for the San Antonio Missions. The Missions three game win streak ended last night after a 10 6 loss to the Springfield Cardinals, but San Antonio still won the series, winning four of six. Next up, the Missions will make their first ever trip to Hodgetown Stadium to take on those pesky Amarillo sod poodles. <laughs> that series starts tomorrow and runs through Sunday. All right, good luck against the sod poodles. Beat those sod poodles. <laughs>
time now, 442 and 76 degrees for now. Still ahead, some precious moments you need to see during a special reunion at SeaWorld San Antonio over the weekend. Plus, prices for rental cars are spiking. We're going to tell you about the alternatives people are taking to counter that price hike. And welcome back. It's about 445. Rental vehicles are in short supply as Americans race to book vacations. That's driving up prices and sending many looking for alternatives. ABC's Will Reeve has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, travelers across the country are having trouble booking rental cars as they try to squeeze in their vacations before the end of summer. Painfully long wait times and excruciating prices, all contributing to what experts are calling the carpocalypse. First, a lot of car rental companies really trimmed their fleets back substantially, 30 to 40 percent during the pandemic due to this incredible drop in demand. Car seekers turning to alternatives to the traditional rental services with car sharing apps like Turo. The inventory was a lot better on Turo and as well as the prices. So four days, we paid probably what we would have paid for one day on the traditional car rental. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll hear tips on how you can reserve a car while avoiding massive fees to make the most of your vacation. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. A weekend SeaWorld soldier surprise. Army Sergeant Noel Arando was reunited with his wife and three kids yesterday. That's after he spent 10 months in the Middle East. Please join me in welcoming home soldier Noel Arando. His kids had no idea this was happening, so they are eight, seven, and four years old. They all sprinted into daddy's arms for a long overdue hug as soon as they saw him. Non-stop hugs, a trip to SeaWorld San Antonio and a Rhonda family tradition. And after some well-warranted emotions settled, the Rhondas got to enjoy the shows they've experienced many times before, but this time all over again as a family. Welcome back, Sergeant, and thank you for your service. Yes, thank you for your service. Glad to see them all together. And a nice crowd there at SeaWorld. Very busy weekends <laughs> at theme parks, even with the heat. We are going to talk to uh, now Mike Osterhage and get an update on what's ahead for the rest of the weekend. That's a good spot to be in, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I was just, I, I'm still getting, you know, those reunions always get you. Yes. So. Uh, yeah, shade, you know, that's the, the best bet because even though temperatures were a little bit below normal this weekend, uh, boy, if you're in the direct sun, and that's the thing. All numbers we talk about are always taken in the shade. So if you're out in the direct sun, that adds, I mean, not only are you feeling the temperature of the air, but then the sun's kind of heating you up too. So it feels 10, 15 degrees warmer than that. The other thing we were dealing with over the weekend, I was, I was driving around, especially Saturday, I don't know, about five, uh, six o'clock in the evening, and you could really see that little bit of uh, Saharan dust out there. We're going to have uh, some of it around today, so it'll be uh, interesting looking out there, not those vivid, not vivid sunshine, but uh, it's still plenty of sunshine to heat us up. All right, clouds this morning, and uh, we do have some fog to deal with off to the east, LaGrange and Beeville. Zero visibility up there in LaGrange, a quarter mile Beeville. Gonzalez, a hint of it. There's a hint of fog around Castroville as well. So just watch out in a couple of spots, especially off to the east this morning. Now, it, the dew points, humidity, that's up there this morning. And what's helping out is the moisture in the ground. We are going to go through that cycle, it looks like, in the afternoon where... Well, not too much this afternoon. Dew points should be dropping down a little bit, then coming up in the morning. And then by tomorrow afternoon, we should see, uh, you know, a little bit more of a, a break in the humidity in the afternoons. We'll still have somewhat of a heat index to deal with. But again, we'll go through that daily cycle back and forth with some of the uh, humidity around here. Here's what's going on in water vapor imagery. We've got a lot of clear skies out there. We don't have much moisture aloft in the atmosphere. Uh, you know, little bits here and there. We're getting some of our early morning low clouds, obviously. But notice how the flow is coming in off the east. That is going to give us a chance for a couple of showers by midweek. We were talking about this last week, how it's like, don't get too excited about it. There is a little bit of a disturbance that's going to be kind of pushed in here in that flow coming in off the, the Gulf of Mexico. Today, sunshine in the morning, or excuse me, clouds in the morning, sunshine in the afternoon. We'll go through the same process tomorrow. Clouds in the morning. 
sunshine and then by Wednesday that little bit of a disturbance will come on in here and uh, a few showers, maybe a thunderstorm scattered about here and there. I wouldn't get really excited about it. I'm going maybe 10% chance for some rain and that would be about the extent of it. And then after that, it's pretty much any hope for rain is not going to be is going to be out the window. Basically 89 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies, and then we are going to have plenty of uh, sunshine later on today. 95 high temperature, a lot of areas, especially you head off to the west toward the Rio Grande and temperatures are going to be upper 90s and even some triple digits out there with a few extra clouds. We may stay at 94 on Wednesday, close to seasonal normals, and then the trend will be for temperatures to continue to creep upward as we continue to dry out. It's going to be much as the ground continues to dry out. It's going to be much easier to have those temperatures getting into the upper 90s. But again, that's, you know, Friday 96, a seasonal normal temperature. And um, by next week, could actually be pushing at that magic number. 100. <laughs> Possibly, yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah just, I will say this, despite the Saharan dust that was around this weekend, it was a pretty weekend here. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was gorgeous. But I'll tell you what, if you're outside, I mean, even for 10 minutes without sunscreen on, that can get you. So well, sunscreen, water, shade. We did all of the above this weekend. Good. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. <laughs> right now it's 451, about 76 degrees. And coming up next, the popular Walking Dead series is getting a final season. Plus, not so good news for LeBron, LeBron James' Space Jam reboot. Here are your lottery numbers this morning. Pick three, two, four, zero, Fireball zero, uh, four. Daily four numbers, five, two, five, eight, Fireball one. Cash five, one, six, 15, 31, 32. And Lotto, Texas, 3, 7, 10, 24, 28, 34. Your Powerball number is 1, 4, 11, 59, 67, Powerball 10, Power Play 2. Good luck. Four fifty four, a new movie for M. Night Shyamalan, plus the latest on the final season of The Walking Dead. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Christopher Watson. M. Night Shyamalan's horror thriller Old debuted in first place at the box office with $16.5 million. But perhaps the bigger story is what happened to last week's number one. The LeBron James animated comedy Space Jam, a new legacy, was expected to repeat in first. Instead, it fouled out, falling to fourth in week two with $9.5 million, a nearly 70% drop in business from last week's $31 million debut. Jackie Mason has died. The quintessential Borscht Belt comedian enjoyed an award winning though occasionally controversial stage and screen career that lasted over 60 years. He was 93. News out of Comic-Con at Home includes a trailer for The Walking Dead's final season. The first of 24 episodes drops in August. And Rolling Stones legend Mick Jagger, 78 Monday. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. 455, about 76 degrees. And still ahead, the capital murder trial of Otis McCain continues later this morning. We're going to tell you what's next now that the state has arrested its case. Plus, we're checking out the world's brightest flashlight just developed. That's coming up in your morning Tech Bites. One thing this last year taught us is how to better utilize the space we have. Still ahead on GMSA at 6, how to make better use of your garage space. If you're headed out the door in the next few minutes, we have some flashing lights, 10 and ProBant looks like it's construction out there. Light traffic in the other lane. Stephen Cavazos just walked into the studio getting set up to update you on traffic on your early, early, early Monday morning. The early bird gets the worm, of course. We'll be right back. from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A 13 year old was shot in the city's east side last night. Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa. Coming up on GMSA, what police are saying about this investigation. The defense is set to make its case in the trial of Otis McCain. That's coming up. And outside with live cam, very warm start to your day. Mid 70s here in town with some morning cloudiness. Good morning, everybody. I hope you had an awesome weekend. It is Monday, July 26th.
Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a great weekend. Uh, we, we had a good weekend, but it was a little warm. A little it warm. was a bit on the warm side, but Mike said, hey, all things considered, it still wasn't too bad. No, I mean, if you temperature wise, we were still below the the average, the normal, which I mean, still if you're outside, it was pretty darn hot out there, especially if you're in the direct sun, because there was really nothing but sunshine this weekend and a little bit of that kind of uh, kind of haze out there. Thanks to some of that Saharan dust 77 right now. The average is 75, so we're close to that. That bottom number dew point 74. Yeah, humidity is definitely uh, sticking around here this morning, and that's well, first of all, we'll make it up to 95 later on today, so that will get closer to a, a normal average high temperature. We the aquifer reading over the weekend did not change in yesterday's reading, and the allergens mold is on the moderate side with all this humidity, and we had some clear skies and some other factors. That's why we're seeing a little bit of fog, especially off to the east. Lagrange still zero visibility, quarter mile down the road at Beeville and a hint of it around Gonzales. Even U Valley has a hint of fog. There's a, a hint around Castroville as well. So just a couple of spots here and there, especially off to the east where you may run into some of that fog. So this morning, mostly cloudy Again, a little bit of fog around here off to the east and later on today, sunny and it's going to be hot, but pretty much what we'd expect for a July the 26th with temperatures up in the mid 90s. There will be some upper 90s and even triple digits, especially off to the west, as you would expect over by the uh, the Rio Grande. And then midweek, don't get really excited about this. There's a little disturbance trying to come in here from the east, and that could give us a shower or two by midweek. Keep temperatures down a degree or two. And then after that, sunshine, and we're going to continue to heat up upper 90s. That means there's going to be a lot more of those triple digits around. Details on the last couple of days, last week of July, in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Good Monday morning, sir. What's going on? Morning to you, Mike. Uh, we see some flashing lights here at I-10 at ProBent. Uh, Mark had seen this a little bit earlier on the Transguide cameras. Uh, we're taking a closer look now and seeing that uh, these cones that are being set up there. Uh, talk to our friends over there at Transguide. It does appear that this is off I-10 West at ProBent. Looks like they could be setting up for some construction but keep in mind when you see those flashing lights and cones move over and slow downs for our tech stock crews. They're working to make the roads better for you and I. Uh, but we do see a stall here off Loop 410 westbound at Blanco Road, not causing any delays right now, but check those vehicles before you get out on the roadways this morning. Other construction to be on the lookout for happening here off I-35 northbound at FM 3009 going up toward New Braunfels. You can see we're seeing a little bit of a slowdown there, but thankfully still early enough to where it's not that drastic. So good sign there, but overall pretty quiet quiet so far as we're getting this new work week started. Uh, taking a look at our inbound times right now. If you're going to be traveling to the downtown San Antonio area from any of these neighboring communities, it looks pretty good right now. 25 minutes coming in from I-10 and Bernie, 26 from 281 and Bulverde, and 25 coming in from New Braunfels on 35. Uh, taking one last look here at Transguide at I-10 at ProBent. Yes, these flashing lights uh, are going to be there for a little while. We'll be watching it and see how that does impact your morning drive. And coming up later on GMSA, we'll have more on an expansion project groundbreaking ceremony uh, you'll need to know about coming up later this morning. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Top local story. 13 year old boy was shot last night. It happened over and on the city's east side and police still have several questions about what led up to the gunfire. This happened in the 1200 block of South Olive. Sarah Costa is live downtown with what police know about this investigation so far. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Uh, police are trying to figure out if this was a drive-by shooting or if the teen actually knew the shooter because they couldn't find a crime scene. So this is what police know so far. They were called out to the 1200 block of South Olive Street on the city's east side just after 11 last night. When they arrived, they found a 13-year-old male who had been shot in the shoulder. Police were able to talk to the teen who told police that he was in front of a nearby school when a car drove up and shot at him. The problem, police couldn't find a crime scene. Investigators say no shell casings or other evidence was found in the area where the teen told police he had been shot. Police say there were three other people with the teen when the alleged drive-by shooting happened. Police took them into custody to question them about the shooting. Now, that 13-year-old was taken to University Hospital for that gunshot wound to his shoulder. Police did not say what condition that teen was in when he was transported, and police continue to look for a suspect this morning as their investigation continues. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah.
The capital murder trial of Otis McCain is set to resume this morning. On Friday, the state rested its case, and now it's time for the defense to make its case. We are expecting further witness testimony today. You can follow along and catch up with the story so far at KSAT.com or on our KSAT TV app available wherever you stream. Now to the latest in the standoff between Texas Democrats and Republicans over voting bills. State Representative Philip Cortez from San Antonio is back in Washington, D.C. this morning, joining his fellow Democrats back in the nation's capital. Cortez among the initial group which broke quorum flying to D.C. in an effort to block proposed voting legislation here in Texas. Cortez had returned to Austin recently to resume discussions but decided to rejoin his colleagues after he says progress reached a standstill. In a statement, Cortez said, in part, I stand firm in my resolve to remain with the Democratic caucus until the special session ends and to do whatever it takes to fight for the freedom to vote for all Texans. The Democrats who remain in D.C. say they're happy to have Cortez back. You can read the full statements and catch up on the latest news on the Texas legislature's special session right now at KSAT.com. In national news to the extreme weather conditions across the West. We have new images from flash floods to wildfires now exploding in size. Here's ABC's Mono Kassar Abdi. This morning, deaths in multiple states now being blamed on extreme weather. In central Utah, police say high winds kicked up a sandstorm on Interstate 15, causing this 20-car pileup. At least seven people were killed. Several others were hospitalized overnight. In Arizona, authorities are searching for two children, both swept away by floodwaters and separate incidents. Authorities in Cottonwood identified the missing 16-year-old as Faith Moore, who's related to several first responders in the community. Her grandfather is a retired fire chief. We're not giving up, and we thank everyone for all of your support. We want our sweet girl home. And we know she's coming home. Faith called 911 Saturday night, saying her vehicle was stranded in knee-high water. Authorities say rushing water swept her off her car during the rescue attempt. The water at was only at her knees at the time she called for help. The water quickly rose to over eight feet within an hour. Farther south, authorities are searching for a four-year-old girl in the town of Pima, where police say floodwaters overtook a family's car on this road. Rescuers pulled five family members to safety, but the water swept the vehicle away before they got to the little girl. It's a small community and it, it's, it's heartbreaking when something like this happens. In the meantime, the extreme drought is fueling at least 80 wildfires in 11 states. In Northern California this weekend, the state's largest fire, the Dixie Fire, exploded in size after merging with a smaller blaze. It's now raging in two counties, burning at least a dozen homes, but threatening as many as 10,000. And this fire in Montana is so destructive, Utah and California are sending resources, despite the major fires burning in their own states. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. And time now is 5.07 and it's about 76 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, how a teenager has developed what's now considered to be the world's brightest flashlight. Plus, as more people try to travel this year, we're checking out the top 10 airlines of 2021 so far. And outside with live cam as we get your Monday going right here on GMSA. We'll check back in with Stephen Cavazos coming up. See how that construction is looking out there on a portion of I-10. 511, it's almost an understatement to say it's been a wild ride for U.S. Airlines over the last 18 months amid COVID-induced travel fears and all those restrictions, not to mention trouble with unruly passengers who refuse to wear their masks. But with nearly 49% of the country fully vaccinated, travel is making a big comeback, even with the fast-spreading Delta variant. Max Massey explains the rankings of the top 10 airlines for 2021. If you're ready to travel, the Points Guy TPG has released the annual report on the best U.S. airlines for 2021. To determine the list, the website ranked each airline in four categories using data from the Department of Transportation. Here are the most important factors, reliability, experience, cost, and loyalty. For time purposes, we're just going to go over the top five. So at the top spot, Delta Airlines, their top performing areas, involuntary bumps from flights, lounges, their lowest performing areas, affordability. Then coming in at number two, Southwest, top performing areas, customer satisfaction. People are very happy with Southwest, their bag and their change fees and their award availability. A Southwest spokesperson actually said that they're honored to make the list during one of the toughest years in the airline's history. They credit Southwest employees for the success. In third, we have 
United Airlines that thrives over their frequent flyer program and the route network. Big shocker coming in at number four, Alaska Airlines, the top performing area of their lounges, and at five, American Airlines. Other big names on the list are Spirit and Frontier Airlines. You can find the entire list right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Guys, back to you. And happy traveling this summer. Be safe out there. 512, about 76 degrees. Still ahead following recent billionaire space adventures, the U.S. has tightened its definition of the word astronaut. Interesting. I will show you the world's brightest flashlight. The Olympics and Paralympics are back. And watching our athletes will once again give the impression that America is the healthiest country in the world. We aren't, but we can be. Our collective health is too important to take for granted ever again. The health of our nation cannot just be measured by the victories of our champions. It must be measured by the health of all of us. Touch after touch, bacteria in your home never stops. That's why Microband 24 doesn't just sanitize and stop. Microband 24 keeps killing bacteria for 24 hours. Spray on hard surfaces to kill 99.9% .9 of viruses and bacteria initially, including the COVID-19 virus. Once dry, Microband forms a shield that keeps killing bacteria for 24 hours, touch after touch. Microband 24. Touch after touch, it doesn't give up. 516, welcome back and good morning to you. A new survey finds many Americans are finally unplugging from the office. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, Americans finally unplugging during summer vacation. According to a survey in the Wall Street Journal, 79% of people plan to use more vacation days this year, and 82% said they plan to have less contact with the office this year than during past vacations. And it appears Jeff Bezos and Richard Branson are not officially astronauts, despite their historic space flights. The FAA quietly changed its rules on who's considered an astronaut the same day as Bezos' flight. Now, astronauts must be part of a crew that contributes to public safety or human spaceflight safety. Finally, the world's brightest record, and it is all thanks to a massive flashlight built by YouTube stars from Canada. It's more than five times brighter than the most powerful flashlight right now. And here we thought these lights in our studio were bright. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. I can't even imagine the heat generated off that flashlight. That would be terrible. So you asked what do we call oh. these guys now instead of astronauts? Yes. yes. I, I just said rich. Rich. Yeah, billionaires. <laughs> yeah, Not explorers. Rich explorers. <laughs> very, <laughs> Maybe. very rich explorers. Let's see how the roads are looking right now. 517, Stephen is standing by with the very latest. Well, if you're going to be exploring the roads, we do have some construction that you're going to want to be on the lookout for. Uh, we showed you this via Transcat a little bit earlier this morning. I-10 at 35, uh, you see those flashing lights and cones of uh, few lanes blocked off there. That's because there is some construction that is being set up out there this morning. Uh, you can see that a few lanes are going to be impacted and this is happening right here off I-10 westbound at Pro Bent. Misspelling there, my bad. Uh, but we want you to be cautious when you see those flashing lights again. Move over, slow down for those text dot crews that are working to make the roads better. Uh, still some construction here off I-35 northbound at FM 3009. Uh, traffic there looks like it is starting to slow down up there going out towards New Braunfels. So just be prepared for those possible slowdowns. Now, as we mentioned, the big thing that's going to be happening today is uh, the groundbreaking for the 1604 expansion project. This is a pretty big deal, guys. So this is a transformative Texas clear lanes project. It's a $1 billion investment in 23 miles of transportation improvement designed to increase mobility, reduce congestion and enhance safety. According to TxDOT, uh, 1604 is one of the most congested corridors in the entire state. The project does include five segments. And again, this is the first segment and this cost of this segment alone is $148 million. That ground baking ceremony is going to be happening today. That's going to be around 11. Of course, we'll be keeping you updated on how that's going to be impacting that commute, but no doubt, uh, hopefully that's going to bring some relief to that heavily congested corridor because if you travel down there, it is pretty awful. Yeah, people yeah. that travel out there are like, ah, finally, yeah, <laughs> finally. And of course, it's going to take a long time. Something that's like 20, 20, 20, 20 plus years. Mm. It's going to take a while, but, but we need seriously, it. yeah, that's yeah. what tech starts saying. Yeah. Good. Lord. Hmm. But you know, it, it, it's funny because a couple of weeks ago I was over there uh, on the like from 151 ish Bandera right. coming around, and yeah, yeah traffic was as hands as, oh, you know, and then you go up half mile 
and it was clear. So it's just, you know, They're it's portions. like, one, yeah, there's it's portions one or two of it. cars that for no reason. You got lucky. Or, <laughs> yeah. Lucky. Or, because from about 151 all the way to 35 now, any yes. given well, day, yeah. I mean, it used to be an accident would jam it up, and now it's like that pretty it's an everyday. much. It's, it's a normal it's an day, everyday thing. Like, it's always frustrating when there's no reason for mm -hmm. it, and it's, you know, somebody merging or whatever. But yeah, anyway. or lack of turn signals. We could talk about this yes, all day. We, oh, yeah, but anyway. Yeah. So the moon was stunning this weekend, Mike. Yeah, it was It was gorgeous out there, and look at that. It almost looks like the sun, but yeah, it was beautiful, bright, full moon on Saturday. And still, uh, obviously, it's still going to be big and bright this evening, so well, just watch it as the sun is going down off to the east. Just turn to the, uh, or excuse me, going down off to the west, turn to the east and watch the uh, the moon coming up. Sun's obviously going to be an uh, well, hour, hour and a half away from uh, Coming up, we do have some clouds out there this morning. All right, this weekend uh, was, yeah, it got hotter, but, you know, it, it still wasn't quite up to normal. And there have only been a handful of days when it's been really, really hot. As a matter of fact, going all the way back to the 14th of June is when I was just checking some of the records, got up to 96 degrees. That's the hottest we've been officially out there at the airport so far. And then we've just had, again, a handful of days hitting 95. Now, of course, going back, in toward, uh, let's see, April, we hit 95 degrees. So that was way, way above normal back on the, the 9th of April. And then also going in toward the couple of days around early April, we were at 94 degrees. And then now we've had a few more days, obviously, at 94, but just some of the earlier times we hit it back in the first part of May and then also first part of April hitting 94 degrees. So yes, Earlier on, there were a few more degree, few more days when we were well above normal, getting up into the mid 90s, and you know we've hit it a, a couple of times this month. But as far as normal days, we've hardly even hit normal so far in July. That is going to be changing though. Uh, at noon, 89 degrees, and then we are going to be uh, getting up in toward about 95 later on today. And as far as the uh, planning forecast, we're going to be well up there into the uh, mid 90s going into the next couple of days and we'll continue as the ground gets dried out more because we've obviously had a lot of moisture in the ground from the rain that we've had and that really it takes a lot more energy to heat up that moisture but as the ground dries out more that's going to allow temperatures to come up now we do have a 10 percent chance very small chance for a couple of showers around here on wednesday there's a little disturbance coming in here from the east and then going into the next uh, few days after that it does look like temperatures will continue to go up now this is of course, one thermometer out there at the airport and a lot of readings off to the east or excuse me, off to the west are going to be upper 90s and triple digits. We will have somewhat of heat index to deal with, but it does look like temperatures will continue that slow and steady climb going in toward the weekend and the first part of next week, first part of August, obviously getting up to about 97 degrees, although getting into those first couple of weeks of August right around the it's the 7th through the 6th through the 17th or something like that is when 97 is the average high temperature. So, so we're about to reach our cruising altitude yeah. <laughs> yeah, for the summer. Good way to put it. Okay. okay. Thank, thank you, Mike. You're about, ready. about 522, 77 degrees at San Antonio International Airport. And still ahead in your morning spotlight, F9 and Black Widow hit worldwide box office milestones. Plus, we get a teaser for Army of Thieves. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick 3, 240, Fireball 4. Daily four numbers, five, two, five, eight, fireball one. Cash five, one, six, 15, 31, 32, and a lot of Texas, three, seven, 10, 24, 28, 34. Your Powerball numbers, one, four, 11, 59, 67, Powerball 10, power play two. Good luck. Five twenty six. There's plenty of movie news to start your week, including the 40th anniversary of the Bill Murray comedy Stripes. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. Brother against brother. This should be interesting. Despite the pandemic, two Hollywood movies have managed to reach milestones. F9 The Fast Saga is the first film to top $600 million worldwide in 18 months. And Black Widow has topped $300 million worldwide, despite not yet having a release date in China. You're familiar with the outbreak in America. The one turning people into flesh any monsters. Yes, I heard something about it. Here's your first look at Army of Thieves, a prequel to Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead, about a small town bank teller who teams with a crew of criminals to crack safes across Europe. No release date yet for the Netflix thriller. Before I knew it, she was walking next to me. Singing, do I did it, did it, I did it, do. 
It's been 40 years since Bill Murray and company strutted into theaters in stripes. To mark the anniversary, the military comedy is returning to theaters on Sunday, August 29th and Thursday, September 2nd. Check FathomEvents.com for tickets and info. That's the fact, Jack! That's the fact, Jack! Singing doo-wah diddy in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Steph, you know what we've done here, right? We've created a monster. Mike's going to be quoting it all day <laughs> long, and that's okay. It, we're okay with that. Funny yeah. movie, 527, about 77 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, why medical experts are talking about a worst-case scenario of 4,000 COVID-19-related deaths a day. So ahead, what industry experts are saying about a possible school supply shortage ahead of the upcoming tax-free weekend. A new poll shows more than a third of Americans are considering quitting their jobs. Still ahead on GMSA at 6, the top reasons why workers say they want to make the move. Making headlines this hour, top medical experts continue to talk about worst case scenarios as the number of new COVID-19 cases continues to rise. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are going to feel like July this week for the most part, and we had a pretty hot weekend. And good morning to you. It is Monday. It is July 26th. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a great weekend. Our, ours was good, but super hot. Uh, I was telling you about my husband having the, the Irish football game. It was at 1130 in the morning on Saturday. Yeah. And there was no shade at all. No shade at all. Like, so he uh, guys are brave. Yeah, I bet those guys really sweated this weekend. Everybody was red. Mm -hmm. I <laughs> yeah. bet. Mike's here with more. I guess more on tap for this week, Mike. Yeah, temperatures will uh, continue the slow climb upward this weekend. Of course, yes, it was hot, especially if you're in the direct I mean, that, the, that adds 10 to 15 degrees to what it feels like, but uh, the high temperatures were still on the below normal side. That's not going to be the trend. We're going to be up closer to seasonal normals as we go into uh, not only today, but the next few days. 77 right now, that number is back up, dew point 74, which means there's a lot of humidity out there. Your glasses may fog up when you go from air conditioning outside. A little bit of a breeze, primarily out of the south, and we do have some fog around. LaGrange is Still reporting at uh, zero visibility. Quarter mile Beeville, hints of it around Gonzales, even Uvalde, a uh, hint of it in Castroville. So just again, be on the lookout for some of that. Mold is moderate. That should continue to go down in the next few days, given the fact we don't have any except for a tiny chance for some rain. 95 for a high temperature. There's going to be a lot of upper 90s around, especially the further obviously west you go and then heading in toward the Rio Grande, even some uh, triple digit temperatures. And then of course, add in some of the humidity. It'll feel closer to 100. And then again, that is in the shade. So those are the three things you got to have now, every day as the experts say sunscreen, lots of water and lots and lots of shade and take breaks and temperatures will continue to go up. We'll talk about that very small chance for a shower to maybe by midweek. I wouldn't get too excited about it. Unfortunately, time uh, traffic authority. Here is Stephen Cavazos. What's going on? Uh, hey, good morning, Mike. Well, let's take a look here at I-10 at ProBand. We've been talking about this throughout the morning here on GMSA. Uh, looks like there is some construction going on out there where a few lanes are being impacted. You can see we have several flashing lights and cones that indicates we do have our textile crews out there working on the roads. Right now, looks like two lanes are open, so just be sure to slow down because that construction could be there quite a while based off what we're looking at. Uh, taking a look here at the map, I-10 westbound at ProBand again is where that construction is taking place. Uh, so just be prepared if you're heading out the door in the next few moments. And if this is in your route, we do have that on our radar this morning. Uh, something else that we're keeping a close eye on here is still this construction off 35 northbound at FM 3009 going up to New Braunfels. You can see that orange uh, shows that we are seeing a little bit of a slow down there. Uh, usually we start to see it in the southbound lanes, especially as the morning starts to pick up. But we know as more people get out on the roadways, we could start to see those slowdowns continuing to expand. So just use some caution. Uh, when you see that construction and those lights out there. Inbound times are looking pretty good, though. Take a look right now. I-10 coming in from Seguin is pretty green with 29 minutes to the downtown San Antonio area. 22 minutes coming in from Lavernia on 87. And if you're coming in from Floresville, we have 28 minutes. Uh, taking a look here at I-10 at ProBand one more time. We're going to continue to watch this, see how that's going to impact those traffic commutes. But we'll be watching the roads closely. We have gas prices and more construction to be on the lookout coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie.
This morning, the nationwide vaccination rate has slowed to a crawl. Health experts say we're nowhere near where we need to be to stop the spread of that Delta variant. And CNN's Britt Conry reports at this rate, the worst case scenario predicts thousands of Americans dying every day. We're going in the wrong direction. And that direction is up. The rate of new COVID-19 cases continues to rise, but less than 58% of people 12 and up are fully vaccinated. Worst case scenario, if vaccination rates don't improve, 4,000 deaths a day. Could it happen? I'm not so sure it would be the worst case scenario, but it's not going to be good. But health experts say it doesn't have to be this way, calling this a pandemic of the unvaccinated. We can't say anymore, well, it's the old people who are going to die. It's young people now who are coming in very sick. Preventing the worst case scenario means looking at every possible avenue, every person, to get the unvaccinated off the mark. What I would really like to see is more and more of the leaders in those areas that are not vaccinating to get out and speak out and encourage people to get vaccinated. Any uh, of us who are in a position to be able to influence people and to make a message that the vaccine is safe, that it's effective, there were no safety shortcuts in getting this vaccine to the public, uh, that uh, it was built upon decades of research and so far has a very uh, good safety protocol uh, and that it's very effective and, and also effective against the Delta variant. We need friends stepping up and talking to their friends who are unvaccinated. All right. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Perfect. Rising COVID rates, vaccine hesitancy, asylum seekers being dropped off in San Antonio and representing the Alamo City in D.C. to advocate for infrastructure funding. Mayor Ron Nirenberg has been busy and joined Leading and Say this weekend to talk about it all. Yes, we start off by talking about the trip to Washington, D.C. Projects on the way for San Antonio, including transportation, the West Side Creek Project, and a strong economic recovery from this pandemic. The mayor called it a successful trip. We also talked about the latest on the pandemic, the low likelihood of a mask mandate, and the recent reports that asylum seekers are coming through San Antonio. Listen to what the mayor had to say. One of the visits I had uh, at in D.C. last week was uh, to appeal for coordination. Uh, in so far as they notify us that they're coming. Because what happens is um, folks who are dropped here, migrants are asylum seekers. They're here legally uh, to go through a legal process. They're not here um, by and large to stay in San Antonio. They're going to reconnect with their families or sponsor families elsewhere in the United States. We have the full interview available right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. We have Leading SA, our segment, every Sunday at 8 a.m. We'll see you next Sunday, guys. Back to you. In other headlines this morning, a massive sandstorm hit parts of northwestern China over the weekend. Watch as this rolls over buildings and highways. The city's on the edge of the Gobi Desert, so they are accustomed to seeing sandstorms. China's state news agency reports this storm reached as high as 100 meters. The storm overtook an expressway in just minutes and reduced visibility to dangerously low levels. Look at that. Police had to direct stranded vehicles and get people off of the roadways safely. California's largest wildfire merged with a smaller blaze and destroyed homes in remote areas with limited access for firefighters. Meanwhile, numerous other fires gained strength and threatened property across the U.S. West. The massive Dixie fire had already leveled a dozen houses and other structures. That blaze is 21 percent contained. Firefighters also reported progress against the nation's largest wildfire, the Bootleg Fire, in southern Oregon. That is 46% contained. Fires were also burning in Washington, Idaho, and Montana. Now to the Tokyo Olympics after a slow start. Team USA finally adding to the medal count at the Summer Games. Here's ABC's Faith Abube with the highs and the lows. Some ups and downs for Team USA at the Tokyo Olympics. The U.S. winning gold in the men's 4x100 freestyle relay. In a highly anticipated matchup, Team USA's Katie Ledecky coming in second behind Australia's Ariane Titmus in the women's 400-meter freestyle. In men's basketball, Team USA losing to France 83-76, ending their 25-game winning streak in the Olympics going back to 2004. France is a good team. They play very, very well together, and you can even tell that they just stayed consistent throughout the whole game. In the Olympic debut of men's skateboarding, Jagger Eaton taking home the sport's first ever bronze medal. 
Simone Biles and the women's gymnastics team placing second behind the Russians after the qualifying rounds. It's the first time in a decade U.S. women's gymnastics hasn't come out on top in qualifying. Biles stepped out of bounds during her floor routine and her first vault, but still had the best all-around score. Meantime, as coronavirus concerns linger, the International Olympic Committee relaxing the mask policy at victory ceremonies, saying athletes can briefly take off their masks while they get their pictures taken on the podium. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. And time now is 539 and it's about 77 degrees out there. Still ahead on the morning show, closer like look at why more and more parents are deciding to take the plunge and do homeschooling. And we'll tell you when tax-free weekend is this year and why you shouldn't delay when it comes to buying school supplies. Yeah, I was at an HEB yesterday and it already looked like there had been a run on many oh, supplies. No. Yep. I'm behind. Grab them <laughs> when you see them, folks. 540, about 77 degrees. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 542. In your morning consumer headlines, it's tax-free weekend. That will be coming up soon. This year, it runs from August 6th through the 8th. And if you're a parent preparing for back-to-school shopping, you probably shouldn't procrastinate. Industry experts expect demand for school merchandise to be high. Some experts think that could lead to a shortage of school supplies, especially later in the season. One expert says the categories in most danger of shortages include backpacks, stationery, sports equipment, laptops, and tablets. We ran a story similar to this last week, and we got lots of people already asking questions, very concerned about that. Yeah. Some U.S. parents say they're planning to continue to homeschool their kids, even as schools get ready to resume in-person classes. Some families say they want to better help their children who have special educational needs. Others are looking for a faith-based curriculum, or they say their local schools are flawed. U.S. Census Bureau has confirmed the surge. It says the rate of households homeschooling their children rose to 11% by September of 2020, doubling from 5% six months earlier. School cafeterias are dealing with worldwide supply chain issues as well. Some are even being forced to cut many choices as suppliers struggle to keep up. Even lunch trays are running short as manufacturers focus more on restaurants. Right now it is 544, about 77 degrees. Coming up next with so much changing again with the Delta variant, we have what you need to know when it comes to masking up. The rise of the Delta variant has some fully vaccinated people questioning if they are protected enough. Sarah Costa explains what scientists are saying about vaccinated people masking up. Should vaccinated people mask up with COVID-19 cases rising? It depends on your situation, but masking in public can provide another layer of protection and help prevent the virus from spreading to others who aren't protected. An easing of safety precautions and the large number of people who remain unvaccinated in many regions are contributing to the spread of cases around the world. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has not changed its advice that fully vaccinated people can safely go without masks in most situations. But Dr. Rochelle Walensky, the agency's director, said local decisions on mask mandates could vary depending on vaccination levels and whether there's a surge. Los Angeles County recently started requiring residents to wear masks indoors regardless of vaccination status. For example, and officials in New Orleans are urging people to do the same. Though COVID-19 vaccines greatly reduce the chance of severe illness and death and remain effective against variants, some experts said wearing a mask is a reasonable precaution since it's still possible to get infected. Masking can also prevent the spread to the virus to children who are too young to get the vaccine and people with weak immune systems. Dr. William Schaffner, an infectious disease expert at Vanderbilt University said a belt and suspenders approach also makes sense for people who are older or have health issues and are more vulnerable to getting severely ill if infected. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Back to you guys. Time check 548. Now it looks like traffic is picking up on I-10. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, what a way to start Monday morning, right? Take a look at this traffic here at I-10 at 35. Uh, things are slowing down as we're seeing that construction that we told you about happening off I-10 westbound right at ProBamp. But you can see that traffic is slowing down. They're almost at a standstill. We know that this could be an issue now that we're getting more vehicles out on the roadways. Of course, we're going to be watching that pretty closely as the morning does develop. Still seeing a slowdown here off I-35 northbound at FM 3009 going up toward New Braunfels. 
So construction right now seems to be the big talking point this morning. We do have a stall here off US 281 southbound right at loop 410, not causing as many delays as what we've been seeing with that construction. But check those vehicles before you get out of the roads. Uh, gas prices looking pretty good right now. If you're coming in, for, if you're try, pardon me, if you're text dots reporting AAA reporting uh, 274 around Bear County and around the state, we're looking at 281 and 315 around the country. But we do want to get to what Texas is reporting a major groundbreaking ceremony happening later this morning. It's a 1604 North expansion project happening in North Bear County. Now this is a $1 billion investment in 23 miles of transportation improvements designed to increase mobility, reduce congestion and enhance safety. Now Texas does report this is one of the most congested corridors in the state. This is the first segment of the project and is it going to include five miles of improvement from state highways 16 to I 10. The cost of this segment alone is $148 million. Again, that's going to be happening today starting at 11. This is the first segment that we're seeing part of the 1604 expansion project, but no doubt a lot of relief coming to that area, hopefully uh, for drivers soon, but it looks like it may take about 20 plus years for that to be completed. So a lot of work. 16 to, to 10, so Bandera Yes, Road Bandera Road, State's Highway 16 to Bandera Road. Definitely. You know, I think it's disrupting the other traffic too, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at some of these yeah. completion dates, and it <laughs> looks like they may start to wrap some of it up around 2027. Wow. But this could be like, you know, a three or four year cycles through but, that. Yeah. But it needs to be done. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's long overdue for folks that live out that way. Well, yeah, it'd be my... nice if somebody could just snap their fingers, but unfortunately. <laughs> no, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> Doesn't work that way. All right, uh, beautiful data to, you know, just go to one of the parks. That's a great place to go because there's a lot of shade usually and over there by the zoo. And Yvonne uh, Sherney sent in a nice little picture there and boy, that water looks nice. Or find yourself a place to go swimming. We've got some clouds hanging around here right now. We'll see a lot more sunshine later on today. All right, temperatures, you know, last week, this weekend, yes, it was warm. We got up into the 90s. Normal high temperature is 96 degrees. Starting off last week, we normal high was 95. We were close to that on Monday, but as you can see, we didn't get for the other days hardly even near normal at all. Now the trend is going to be for temperatures to get hotter as we go on into the next couple of days. We do have some fog to deal with right now. Uh, Lagrange, Beeville, nothing has changed. There's still zero visibility Lagrange and some around Beeville. Gonzalez has dropped a little bit and there's a hint of fog around New Braunfels. So again, watch out for just some of that little patches here and there uh, throughout the next couple of hours. 77 in town, 78 in Lotus, and everybody's in the, the 70s right now. Normal average low is 75 degrees and dew points are fairly high. Remember we got that little bit of a break about midweek last week in dew point temperatures, but we do have somewhat of a heat index right now. It feels like 81 in Helotus and 78 out there at the airport. So yes, heat index will be something we deal with later on this afternoon. Temperatures mid 90s, but it will feel obviously hotter than that. Computer model today. Nothing sunshine out there. Clouds in the morning, clouds tomorrow morning, sunshine in the afternoon. Notice how we have this flow coming in there from the east, and there's a little disturbance out here in the uh, Gulf of Mexico that's going to be working its way on in here on Wednesday primarily. And there's the chance for one or two showers to pop up, may keep temperatures down a degree or two on Wednesday. I wouldn't get really excited about this, but at least there's a very small chance. And then after that, there's really nothing in the foreseeable future after Wednesday as far as any rain chances. 89 at noon today, partly cloudy skies. High temperature makes it up to 95. Again, it's going to feel hotter than that. Head off to the west toward the Rio Grande. Going to be the, looking at a lot of triple digit temperatures. Uh, more of the same tomorrow. Into a summer like consistent forecast. Low temperatures, very consistent with a lot of clouds in the morning. High temperatures, mid 90s. Uh, other than Wednesday, with that very small chance for rain, we continue to warm up. Again, as the ground continues to, to heat up or to dry out, allows things to heat up a lot more easily. So we'll be back up closer to normal readings by uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Friday actually is the day when the high temperature Average is 97 degrees. Low temperatures, you know, the, the hottest actually low and high temperatures in that till August, but the high temperatures average 97 from Friday through the uh, 15th of August. Okay, is that the peak high yeah. for the year? Yeah, okay. Or the average high temperatures Averages. Yeah, of gotcha. 97. So. And is this latest bout of Saharan dust just about done? Uh, we'll have a little bit more around today. Okay. So there was some over the weekend, you know, kind of that mm -hmm. little hazy. Oh, yeah, you couldn't bit. miss it. Yeah. yeah. 
We could see that. I don't know if that's what's giving me sinus over the weekend. It was just that little bit of something there, you know? Yeah. So it could be. Ditto. All right, thank you, Mike. 554, about 77 degrees. Let's look at your winning loud numbers. We have pick three, two, four, zero, fireball four, and your daily four, five, two, five, eight, fireball one. Your cash five numbers, one, six, 15, 31, 32, Lotto, Texas, three, seven, 10, 24, 28, 34, and Powerball, one, four, 11, 59, 67, Powerball 10, power play two. Good morning. Coming up here on a Monday on GMA, the latest from Tokyo, the U.S. adding to its metal collection and the duel in the pool. Katie Ledecky's new rivalry for the ages. We are there live and talking to one of the young. What's going on with our traffic expert, Stephen Cavazos. He'll try to get us some answers and we will go back to Mike Ostrage, who has a forecast that includes temperatures getting up there into the mid to upper 90s. Making headlines this hour, 13 year old shot on the city's east side. We have the latest details from police on the investigation. Plus a classmate of a girl who died from a stabbing in 1988, hoping to keep her memory alive 33 years later. What he's planning to do and how you can help. Outside with live cam, waiting for that sun to come up. Morning clouds, we had Saharan dust, we had heat. Back this weekend, what does the work week look like? Mike Osterhage will have the answer. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hi there, good morning. It is Monday. It is July 26th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hope you had a great weekend. It's a little warm out there, but you know what? In the shade, it wasn't too bad. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was a nice breeze in nice some breeze. places too. Yeah. Brackenridge Park, we're pretty lucky to have that. A lot of shade out there. Yeah, that's the, the thing to do is find some shade because, uh, you know, I, I have to emphasize whenever we talk about numbers and high temperatures and things, those are taken in the shade. So if you're out in the direct sun, you're not just feeling the air temperature, but the sun's beating down and, and I always say cooking you kind of like, I mean, it's heating you up so it feels 10 to 15 degrees warmer than that. Then of course you got to take into account all the humidity too. So yeah, shade and lots and lots of water, lots and lots of sunscreen. We've got uh, cloudy skies right now and some fog. Now LaGrange has up, gone up to half mile visibility. It was down to zero for about an hour or so. Still fog down around Beeville. Hints of it, Uvalde has got a little bit more. Same thing with uh, New Braunfels at eight miles. So just watch out again for a few patches of fog around this morning. 77 current temperature, a little bit above normal across the board and then factor in some of that humidity and we do have a slight bit of a heat index to deal with right now 81 Helotus and Stinson Castroville it feels like 79 degrees and of course that's what we'll have to deal with later on today molds on the moderate side that should be going down over the next few days as we continue as the ground continues to dry out uh, this morning temperatures will be pretty steady at this point mid some upperish 70s more clouds this morning and they will continue to clear out as the uh, day rolls on upper 80s close to 90 already by noon and then here in town we're going to be topping off mid 90s of course it'll feel warmer than that that's taken in the shade but go off to the uh, west and even a lot of uh, surrounding areas we're looking at some you know leaning toward the upper 90s and then triple digits out there on top of that we have a little tiny rain chance coming up here in the next couple of days i wouldn't get really excited about it details on that how hot will we get for the last few days of july that's coming up traffic authority stephen cavazos what's the latest sir hey good morning mike uh well i'll tell you this i wouldn't get excited for any rain chances because i just washed my car so hopefully not uh, i 10 at pro band we are seeing a slow down here uh take a look almost traffic's almost at a standstill in these lanes right now we have two lanes open there is some construction going out there off i 10 westbound again at pro Bend, but taking a look at our maps, uh, we've been seeing this going off from orange to red uh, right now. Traffic moving 28 miles per hour again in these westbound lanes of I 10. So uh, this construction looks like it's just starting. So this could be an issue as we get this Monday morning started. Uh, taking a look at another area where we're starting to see some problems when it comes to traffic. It is right here off I 35 northbound at FM 3009 traffic moving now at 16 miles per hour. So not very fast out there if you're heading up to New Braunfels, so keep that in mind. A few stalls we want to be on the lookout for here. This one off 281 southbound at Loop 410. We're seeing another stall uh, happening. Actually, uh, somewhere here it should pop up a little bit later, but stalls also seem to be an issue right now, so check those vehicles before you get out on the roadways. However, right now, things are looking pretty good if you're coming in from any of these areas to the downtown San Antonio area. 28 minutes coming in from 37 from Pleasanton, 16 minutes from Lytle on 35, and if you are coming in from Highway 90 from Castroville, we have 19 minutes. 
minutes this morning. We're going to take one last look here at I-10 at ProBand. We're going to be watching this closely, but this looks like it could be a problem as we get this new work week started. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, police are working to track down the person responsible for a shooting a 13-year-old boy. Police were called out to the 1200 block of South Olive Street near South Hackberry at about 11 last night. When they got there, they found the 13-year-old had been shot in the shoulder. Investigators say the 13-year-old was able to tell them that he and three others were hanging out in front of a school when someone inside a car drove by and shot at him. However, police say they could not find a crime scene and there was no evidence at the area where the teen told police he was shot. Investigators did detain the three other people to question them about the shooting. San Antonio police say a burglary suspects in the hospital this morning following a failed theft attempt at a store on the south side. Happened just after 8 last night on Zapata Street, not far from South Press and I-37. Police say the store owner showed up and fired two warning shots. As the suspect ran, police say he jumped off a fence and broke his leg. He was taken to the hospital. Police say he'll be charged with criminal trespass and possessing criminal instruments. A man is raising thousands of dollars to keep his classmates' memory alive after she was stabbed to death at a laundromat back in 1988. Christopher Palmer was classmates with seven-year-old Westwood Terrace Elementary School student Jennifer Sue Delgado. San Antonio police say while Jennifer was helping her mother at a laundromat at the corner of West Rock and West Oak Road, a man walked in, became angry at a vending machine, and stabbed both her and her mother. Only her mother survived. Palmer says he now wants to designate a portion of West Rock as Jennifer Sue Delgado Memorial Way. If all this comes to fruition and, and those signs are put up, I would hope that it would just inspire anyone that comes across it. To find out how you can help this cause, you can visit the story on our website at kset.com. The trial of Otis McCain, the man accused of murdering SAPD Detective Benjamin Marconi, continues today. Over the past couple of weeks, prosecutors called on more than 50 witnesses to take the stand. Now it's the defense's turn to make its case and call their witnesses up. As KSET has been covering it all, we have all the latest on the trial right now, including live streams every day court is in session. You can also sign up for our open court newsletter to get notified when there is a news update. Just visit our website at KSET.com. Now to the latest in the standoff between Texas Democrats and Republicans over voting bills. State Rep. Philip Cortez from San Antonio is back in Washington, joining his fellow Democrats back in the nation's capital. Cortez was among the initial group which broke quorum, flying to D.C. in an effort to block proposed voting legislation here in Texas. Cortez had recently returned to Austin to resume the discussions, but decided to rejoin his colleagues after he says progress reached a standstill. In a statement, Cortez said in part, I stand firm in my resolve to remain with the Democratic caucus until the special session ends and do whatever it takes to fight for the freedom to vote for all Texans, end quote. The Democrats who remain in D.C. say they're happy to have Cortez back. You can read the full statements and catch up on the latest on the Texas legislature's special session right now at ksat.com. And pressure is mounting on all sides as senators race to seal a bipartisan infrastructure deal. That can happen as soon as today. One major roadblock is how much money should go to public transit. But spending on water projects, broadband, and other areas remains unresolved, as is tapping COVID-19 funds to help pay for it. The group's lead Republican negotiator says both sides were, quote, about 90 percent of the way there, end quote. Senate Democratic Majority Leader Chuck Schumer wants a vote before the August recess. Venezuela's President Nicolas Maduro has announced that he is ready now to open negotiation with Venezuelan opposition in early August. These talks, which are to be held in Mexico, could count on the participation of foreign governments such as Norway and even the United States. And time now is 6.08 and it's about 77 degrees out there. Still ahead, a surprise visit at Cowboys training camp over the weekend. Details on why Troy Aikman dropped by. Plus, a new poll shows more than a third of Americans are considering quitting their jobs after the break. The top reasons why workers say they want to make the move. And outside with live cam, only about uh, 77 degrees. That's how far we've dropped overnight. Not much of a drop at all. But uh, Mike, has your work week forecast coming up? Do we have any chance of rain at all? We'll ask him coming up.
and welcome back at 612. The rate at which Americans quit their jobs hit a historic high this spring and workers may not be done job hopping this year. Max Massey explains the latest data and what could come next. A new Yahoo Finance Harris Poll survey conducted at the end of June shows that more than a third of all workers, 37 percent, are either thinking of leaving their current jobs or they've already prepared to make the move. Four in five of the potential quitters, 83 percent of those who say they're thinking about quitting, they want to make the move in the next six months, while the same percentage say they've been considering the move for at least the last year. The top reasons why workers want to quit are better opportunities. 46 percent of people said that. 42 percent of people said they want a higher salary. 34 percent of people say they want a better work-life balance. 27 percent said they just want to change the industry and another 27 percent they're just not enjoying their work. Survey respondents could select more than one reason. The survey results come after the rate at which workers quit their jobs actually hit a record high 2.8 percent in April and remained historically high in May at 2.5 percent, much higher than before the pandemic. The number of job openings also reaching a high three months in a row from March to May, meaning workers have more options if they do decide to leave. According to data by the Labor Department, accommodation and food services, along with retail trade, had the largest quit rates in May, 5.7% and 4% respectively. And here's an interesting part about the study. Younger workers are more likely to consider quitting than the older ones. Nearly half of millennials, 46% and 36% of Gen Zers, they are thinking of leaving their jobs while just 31% of Gen Xers, 21% of baby boomers, they're thinking about the move. Guys, back to you. 614. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Still a little bit of a hold up there on I-10. Yeah, 614, and we're already starting to see some uh, pretty big delays, and a lot of it due to construction that we're seeing around the Alamo City and some of our neighboring communities. Take a look here at I-10 at 35. We do have some tech stock crews that are out there working to improve the roads. You can see, though, right behind me, a stretch of lights indicates we're starting to see a backup there. Uh, taking a look at our maps right now, as we mentioned, uh, we've been seeing this uh, going from yellow to red. Right now, traffic moving at 7 miles per hour off I-10 West found at ProBand due to some construction as you just saw in that view from TransGuide. So be on the lookout for that, guys. Starting to see this bigger slowdown here of 35 northbound at FM 3009 going up to New Braunfels. Uh, another one that's going to possibly be causing some issues with traffic moving at 13 miles per hour this morning. So looks like a slow start in some areas, but overall it's been pretty quiet so far. Some stalls here and there. This one off Loop 410 westbound at Evers Road. Uh, but just one more reminder, we are going to have a groundbreaking ceremony happening later this morning for the 1604 expansion project happening in North Bear County. It's a $1 billion investment in 23 miles of transportation improvements to designed to increase mobility, reduce congestion, and enhance safety. And as we've been mentioning, TxDOT does report that this is one of the most congested corridors in the entire state of Texas. This is the first segment of a five-segment project uh, estimated to be $148 million. So whopping uh, number there. But of course, this expansion project is, is designed to improve the transportation in that area. Again, the groundbreaking ceremony will be happening later this morning at 11. But we want to bring it back to TransGuide one last time. If we can see that view from TransGuide, where we do have this construction that is possibly going to be a headache for other drivers out on the roadway this morning. But we'll be watching things closely. Thanks, Stephen. A lot of traffic out there for now. <laughs> but at least it'll be uh, not so hot. Yet. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> until the afternoon, not not up to normal temperatures, yeah. but I mean, it's still going to be hot if you're out there and in the direct sun. Yeah, you just got to find lots and lots of shade because it is just I mean, the sun just beats down on you and kind of like I say, kind of cooks you a little bit. Temperatures are in the mid and upper 70s, a little bit above their uh, respective normals. And uh, today, yeah, sunny and it's going to be hot will be just about up to what you would expect this time of year midweek. Got a mention of it. Don't get really excited about the chance for a shower, but there's going to be a couple of showers around here and then the rest of the week sunshine and we'll just continue to get hotter getting into the upper 90s. And that's as we approach. Do we put this to the Christmas song? It's the most hottest time. Of... Sure, that'll make me feel better about it. Will it? I don't know. Anyway, uh, coming up starting on Friday is when the average high temperature, normal high temperature, gets up to 97 degrees, and that's the average high, normal high, up until the 16th. Now, the low temperatures, the average gets up to 76, the hottest, on the 2nd of August up until the 11th. So really, when you take the, the low and the high into account, 2nd through the 11th, that's the hottest overall time of the year, but average high temperatures up through the uh, 16th. 
Just something to look forward to. All right, uh, yeah, we showed the beautiful picture out there. Find lots of shade going out toward the uh, zoo. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Clouds starting off this morning, obviously, and the humidity dew points are in the mid 70s, some lower 70s hill country, but pretty much mid 70s and leaning toward the upper 70s in the metropolitan area. And these numbers and doesn't seem like a lot going up two degrees, but with the dew points, I mean, 74 versus 72 yesterday morning, even sitting outside in the morning was kind of comfortable and you add just a couple of notches to that and that can make all the difference. And that's what we're going to be seeing for the next few days is some clouds in the morning and then uh, sunshine in the afternoon higher humidity in the morning and dropping down slightly in the afternoon, but we'll still have a heat index to deal with. As far as any rain chances, no, nothing today. We'll have clouds tomorrow morning, sunshine in the afternoon, like I said, but this easterly flow is going to bring in a very small chance, like I said, for a couple of showers around here on Wednesday. A little disturbance is going to be moving on in here, so if you get some rain, consider yourself very lucky on Wednesday, and then after that, it's just going to, we continue, the ground dries out more and more and then we'll continue to heat up going in toward the last couple of days of July. 89 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies, and then a high temperature today, 95. Normal average is 96 right now. And then the next few days, we will stay in mid 90s, maybe down a degree or two within a few extra clouds on Wednesday and uh, some high clouds hanging around here as well. But then um, we just continue to heat up going into the end of the week and the weekend. First of August, of course, on Sunday. And it will feel like August. Yes, it will feel like August. So, ready for, SA. You ready for another birthday? Oh, no. Aww. Ah, that's right. Hey, yeah. today, look at those beautiful flowers. Those are actually cupcakes. I was going to say, they yeah. don't really look like and, flowers. And look at that. Beautiful and, and delicious. Yeah, we are going to learn how to make that. Look at that. That's the thing that's so amazing. All the guests on our show, when they, they have these talents like this, it is just amazing what they can do with, you know, wow. with icing, with all their yeah. different crafts. And, Too and pretty to and eat. It's gorgeous. But we will eat them if given the chance. <laughs> Look at how beautiful those are. I so love that. Coming up today on SA Live yeah, at 1 o'clock. Fire your hand at that. i got to move back here. It's okay. It's lit better. Well, come, on, come, come on, come on up. Oh, shadows, I see. see. You've gone into the, you've gone to the dark side, Mike. <laughs> come back to the bright. Not the <laughs> words you're looking. Six nineteen, about seventy-seven degrees. And a short supply of rental vehicles driving up prices as Americans book more vacations. Coming up in your GMA first look, an alternative option that can save you some money. The Olympics and Paralympics are back. And watching our athletes will once again give the impression that America is the healthiest country in the world. We aren't, but we can be. Our collective health is too important to take for granted ever again. The health of our nation cannot just be measured by the victories of our champions. It must be measured by the health of all of us. Touch after touch, bacteria in your home never stops. That's why Microband 24 doesn't just sanitize and stop. Microband 24 keeps killing bacteria for 24 hours. Spray on hard surfaces to kill 99.9% .9 of viruses and bacteria initially, including the COVID-19 virus. Once dry, Microband forms a shield that keeps killing bacteria for 24 hours, touch after touch. Microband 24, touch after touch, it doesn't give up. In this morning's GMA First Look, travelers across the country are having trouble booking rental cars as they try to squeeze in their vacations before the end of summer. Painfully long wait times and excruciating prices, all contributing to what experts are calling the carpocalypse. First, a lot of car rental companies really trim their fleets back substantially, 30 to 40 percent during the pandemic due to this incredible drop in demand. Car seekers turning to alternatives to the traditional rental services with car sharing apps like Turo. The inventory was a lot better on Turo and as well as the prices. So four days, we paid probably what we would have paid for one day on the traditional car rental. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll hear tips on how you can reserve a car while avoiding massive fees to make the most of your vacation. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. 
In your tech news, Americans are finally unplugging from work during summer vacation. According to a survey published in the Wall Street Journal, 79% of people plan to use more vacation days this year. And more people are shutting off their phones and laptops. 82% said they plan to have less contact with the office this year than during past vacations. It looks like Jeff Bezos and Richard Branson are not officially astronauts despite their historic space flights. According to new FAA rules, astronauts must be a part of a crew that contributes to public safety or human space flight safety. The rules were changed for the first time in 17 years. Finally, the world's brightest record is all thanks to a massive flashlight built by some YouTube stars from Canada. Light from the so-called Night Bright 300 is more than five times brighter than the most powerful commercially available flashlight. Camping with KZAN, powered by Davis Law Firm. An unexpected moment at Cowboys training camp over the weekend. Three-time Super Bowl champ Troy Aikman stopping by for a visit. He was there with Joan Jerry Jones in a conversation that lasted most of practice at the Camp Tower. Aikman was asked if he thought Dak Prescott's ankle will hold up this season. Whether or not he has any soreness or anything like that following these workouts, uh, I don't know. I mean, he'll have to answer that. But uh, the hits are the hits. There, there's not. He knows it's uh, whether or not it's 100 percent. It can hold up. And like I said, I mean, he's got a lot in there. He's got some steel rods and a plate and everything else. So um, he may break his leg, but it won't be where the break was last year. <laughs> <laughs> Normal la uh, nervous laughter. <laughs> Right? I mean, nervous laughter. Hey, we all remember when uh, former Cowboys coach Jimmy Johnson was told he was going to get into the Hall of Fame. The tears he shed as uh, his quarterback watched from the broadcast booth. Poignant moment. The two paired to win two of the Cowboys' three Super Bowl titles in the 90s. Now Aikman will present Johnson at the Hall of Fame ceremonies just days away up in Canton. Here's a look at the Cowboys' schedule this week. Today, the players have the day off. Lucky Ducks. Tomorrow through Thursday, they have practice but from 1 to 3 p.m. And that's a look at sports. I love looking at the old pictures of the Cowboys, you know, during during their time. The I glory guess. days. Yes, yes, very nice. <laughs> time now, 626 and about 77 degrees out there. Still ahead, next half hour, incredible video from Shine after a cloud of sand covers the skyline. Details on how high up it went. Dr. Anthony Fauci says new mask mandates are up for consideration, plus what we know about potential booster shots. That's coming up next. And checking the roads with Transguide, look at this big backup, 10 and Proband folks definitely hitting the brakes there in that one direction. We'll get up to speed on what's going on out there with Stephen Cavazos coming up next. An alleged drive-by shooting left a 13-year-old boy with a gunshot wound to his shoulder. Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa. Coming up on GMSA, why police are questioning if this actually was a drive-by shooting. The Delta variant fueling a surge in COVID cases. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington. The latest on the vaccine and booster shots coming up. Outside with live camp, few breaks in the clouds. This is pretty, a pretty typical pattern lately. Morning clouds, lots of afternoon sunshine. Do we have any rain in the forecast this week? We're about to hit up Mike Ostrage and get the, uh, the, the truth coming up. The truth. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. It's Monday. It is July 26th. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us. And now it's time to look for the shade all the time. All the time. Mm -hmm. Mike, is there even the smallest chance of rain this week? Yes. One day, Wednesday. A uh, couple little, you know, showers popping up here and there. But, you know, when you said typical, yes, as far as the sky conditions, uh -huh. clouds in the morning, sunshine in the afternoon, but not temperatures. I mean, it's been, you know, by my count, the only day we've been above normal as far as a high temperature this month was way back, uh, what, I believe the third got up to 95 degrees. Uh, and we are going to get closer to normal now this week. And then it looks like above that, we are starting off right now with some clouds out there. Temperatures now, the low temperatures, because of all the humidity and cloud cover have been staying a little milder. So that is, yeah, a couple of notches above where it should be. And boy, that humidity is up even a couple of notches from yesterday's reading and you notice it when you step outside. Wind out of the uh, south primarily, about uh, 9 miles per hour. A little bit of fog around Casterville, Pleasanton, and New Braunfels. Not too bad. Uvalde has been slowly and steadily dropping down to four miles. Catula 8 and LaGrange and Bevo both at just a quarter mile visibility. So again, just for the next uh, couple of hours, watch out for a little bit of this fog to form up. Mold is on the moderate side. And uh, we've got, again, mostly cloudy skies this morning. A little bit of fog. 
primarily to the east, but there are you know, hints of it elsewhere. And then later on today, mostly sunny. Yes, it is going to be hot. We'll be up close to a seasonal normal temperature. And of course, that's in the shade. Like Stephanie was saying, it's, you got to find shade because we're going to have a lot of sunshine in the afternoon. And that just heats you up, obviously, in the direct sun. Midweek, maybe a shower. Very small chance for that. And then after that, just more sunshine and it's going to be getting even hotter and upper 90s as we go into the end of the month of July and welcome the month of August. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Steve Cavazos, any big problems out there? And lots of slowdowns this morning, Mike, and stalled vehicles as well. Take a look here. Loop 410 at Callahan shows that we do have a stalled vehicle happening, uh, right, occurring right at this area right now. Hopefully that driver is going to be receiving some roadside assistance soon, but be sure to move over and slow down. It does look like this could be in the shoulder lane, but I really want to bring the attention here to I-10 at Pro Band. As I mentioned, slowdowns are the big issue right now, and take a look right here. There is some construction that is going on out there, leading to some ugly traffic, as you just saw. Seven miles per hour traffic moving right now in those westbound lanes at Pro Band, so not moving very fast. Uh, take a look over here. 35 northbound still seeing a major slowdown here to some other construction with traffic moving at 11 miles per hour, so right now that does seem to be the trending issue is these slowdowns and just a few stalled vehicles. Uh, this one reported here off Loop 410 westbound at Evers Road, so be sure to check those cars before you hit the roadways. But right now, thankfully, these inbound times are still looking pretty good. If you're going to be coming in from any of these areas to the downtown San Antonio area, 24 minutes coming in from I-10 and Bernie, 27 on 281 and Bulverde, and 26 on 35 coming into San Antonio. But take a look again. That red does show that we do have a slowdown in those northbound lanes. So just use some caution out there this morning and be prepared to slow down, pack that patience with a cup of coffee. Thank you, Stephen. Police are working to determine who shot a 13 year old last night and what they believe may have been a drive by shooting near a school. This happened in the 1200 block of South Olive Street near Hackberry. Sarah Costa is live downtown and Sarah, why are police unsure if this was actually a drive by shooting? Good morning, Stephanie. Well, that's the story the teen gave police. The problem is that his story really doesn't match up with the evidence or lack of evidence that police found because they said they had a hard, they couldn't even find a crime scene. So this is what police know at this time, that they were called out to the 1200 block of South Olive just after 11 last night. When they arrived, they found a 13-year-old male who had been shot in the shoulder. Police were able to talk to the teen who told police he was in front of a nearby school when a car drove up and shot at him. The problem, police couldn't find a crime scene. Investigators say no shell casings or other evidence was found in the area where the teen told police he was shot. Police say there were three other people with the teen when the alleged drive-by shooting happened. Police took them into custody to question them about the shooting. That 13-year-old was taken to University Hospital. Police did not say what condition the 13-year-old was in when he was transferred to the hospital, and they continue to search for a suspect this morning. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Sarah, thank you. Right now, 635, a spike in COVID cases across the country is adding fuel to the political fight over vaccines and new restrictions. Dr. Anthony Fauci says new mask mandates are being considered, and there's a renewed push to get more Americans vaccinated as soon as possible. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest on the vaccine and potential booster shots. Good morning. As the Delta variant feels a surge in COVID cases, there is now evidence that the protection the vaccines provide may be on the decline. This morning, the CEO for a company that helped develop the Pfizer vaccine tells the Wall Street Journal that, quote, antibody levels are dropping seven months after immunization among some vaccine recipients. But he added, quote, most of them will remain protected against severe disease and might not yet need a third dose. Dr. Anthony Fauci suggesting to CNN a booster shot may be needed for people with weaker immune systems. If there's going to be a third boost, which might likely happen, will be among first the vulnerable. Thanks to the highly contagious Delta variant, daily COVID infections in the U.S. are up 340 percent since mid-June. Doctors are pleading with people to get the shot. All I can say to the public is you don't want to be in this situation. Trust us. Trust us. You don't want to be in the hospital saying I regret not getting a vaccine. Just 
do it. According to the White House, about 790,000 vaccine doses were given over a 24-hour period this weekend, the most in three weeks. And the former head of the FDA is also providing some optimism. He says the current surge in COVID cases could be over by the end of August, which is much sooner than some models have predicted. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. When it comes to the vaccine rollout, a slight majority of Americans are not protected against COVID-19. The Centers for Disease Control Prevention says just over 163 million people are fully vaccinated. That breaks down to 49.1 percent. 20 states have at least 50 percent of their respective populations fully vaccinated. 11 states have yet to reach the 40 percent mark. Texas is not in either of those groups. Speaking of Texas, Austin has re-entered stage four of the COVID-19 risk-based guidelines. That means masking is recommended indoors for everyone, regardless of vaccination status, according to the city's website. This comes as cases and hospitalizations continue to increase in Travis County as new variants, such as the Delta variant, spread throughout the community. Some places that have already started implementing this guideline include hair salons, universities, and restaurants. Well, rising COVID rates, vaccine hesitancy, asylum seekers being dropped off in San Antonio and representing the Alamo City in Washington advocate for infrastructure funding. Mayor Ron Nirenberg has been busy and joined leading essay this weekend to talk about all of it. Yes, we start off by talking about the trip to Washington, D.C. Projects on the way for San Antonio, including transportation, the West Side Creek Project, and a strong economic recovery from this pandemic. The mayor called it a successful trip. We also talked about the latest on the pandemic, the low likelihood of a mask mandate, and the recent reports that asylum seekers are coming through San Antonio. Listen to what the mayor had to say. One of the visits I had uh, at in D.C. last week was uh, to appeal for coordination. Uh, in so far as they notify us that they're coming. Because what happens is um, folks who are dropped here, migrants, are asylum seekers. They're here legally uh, to go through a legal process. They're not here, um, by and large, to stay in San Antonio. They're going to reconnect with their families or sponsor families elsewhere in the United States. We have the full interview available right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. We have Leading SA, our segment, every Sunday at 8 a.m., We'll see you next Sunday, guys. Back to you. In your morning headlines, Utah Highway Patrol says seven people were killed in a massive pileup during a sandstorm. Agency says 20 cars crashed yesterday afternoon near the town of, it's either Kenosha or Kenosha, Utah. Several people were reportedly taken to hospitals in critical condition. The Highway Patrol says the crashes happened during a period of high winds that caused dust or sandstorm to reduce visibility. Speaking of sandstorms, come check out this incredible video. If you're not watching your screen right now, a massive sandstorm washed over the city of Dunhuang in China yesterday. Now watch as it rolled over the buildings. The storm overtook an expressway in just a few minutes and reduced visibility to dangerous low levels. Police had to direct stranded vehicles to get people off the road safely. 640, about 77 degrees. One thing we may have learned last year, better utilize the space we have. Up next, ways to renovate and make better use of your garage. Many of us use our garages for parking our cars, storing bikes or tools. One thing this last year has taught us how to better utilize the space we have. In this morning's Ask Angie segment, Max Massey shows us how to renovate your garage to give you more space. Updating your garage is a great investment project since it will give you more useful space and open up storage. Start by thinking about how you want to use the space. Do you want to use it for hobbies, exercising, or maybe even hosting guests? Or is it a simple storage space expansion? Try to be realistic about how you plan to use your remodel garage space. Find a quality local pro to help make sure that your project is achievable within your budget and within your timeline. A great pro will also help map out your new garage space to make sure you can still fit your cars inside when it's all done. Once you have your pro, you need to talk about the plans. Will this be a full livable space or just more storage area? Depending on that, you'll want to talk about HVAC, electrical and plumbing needs, which can make it comfortable year round. It's important to ask a lot of questions, even if you're just adding a storage system. Think about things like how secure are the shelves and cabinets? Am I utilizing wall space? Do we need to raise the roof? Will the things I use most be easily accessible? Will my car still fit inside? Safety is another key consideration when remodeling your garage. 
while windows look great and can add natural light, they do make it easier to break in. You may want to consider a security system or at least motion detecting lights on the outside. And of course, don't forget doors or keypads on each of the entrances. Garage doors have electronic sensors that can't be blocked. Depending on how you'll use the space, it'll have different ventilation requirements. These issues are best handled by an experienced professional who can make sure everything is installed correctly the first time. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. 645 and it's starting to look a little scary out there on I-10 <laughs> and ProBand. Yeah, uh, it's scary for a Monday morning, especially. I think this is the epitome of Monday morning traffic. Uh, doesn't look like it's moving very fast here at I-10 at ProBand. Uh, you can see that we do have a few vehicles, a, a lot of vehicles, I should say, out on the roadway right now. Two lanes open right now due to some construction that's going on out there. What we want to do is bring your attention to our map here. You can see traffic right now moving at six miles per hour in those westbound lanes of I-10. This has been there throughout the morning morning on GMSA. We've been talking about it uh, again, causing some big slowdowns, especially now that we're getting more people out on the roadways. Another one that's continuing to be a problem that we're watching out over here. 35 northbound at FM 3009. Some construction that has slowed traffic down to 35 miles per hour here, but check out all that red that we're starting to see there. So do be prepared if you're heading out in these areas. Pack that patience with a cup of coffee. Uh, but right now things are overall looking pretty good aside from these red strips that we're seeing on our maps right now. Uh, do have a stalled vehicle. Loop 410 at Evers that we told you about not creating any issues right now, but we want to bring your attention to our AAA gas prices here uh, right now for the average gas price. AAA reports 274 around the uh, here in Bear County and around the state. We're looking at 281 and around the country 315 and I stopped at the gas station this morning to fuel up my car for the work week, so I'm good to go, but bringing it back here to trans guy. Things are not going here at I 10 at ProBant. Uh, again, this is, seems to be the big problem, but we'll be watching things closely. Saw vacation pictures from somebody filling up somewhere. I mean, let's say upper Midwest. I think it was like 370, yeah, 380 a gallon yeah. or so. That's painful. Yeah. More painful than that traffic there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully it's yeah. Leve leveling out. Okay. Towing, can hope. So. When was the full moon this weekend? Mike? Uh, it's Saturday. Saturday night. Boom. Yeah. I it sure looked oh, I saw that. Yeah. The full buck moon. And yeah, just a gorgeous picture out there. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. A couple days past that, obviously. Okay. You know, we've been talking about how we're going to be getting into the hottest time of the year, which starts as far as. Uh, normal high temperatures actually on the, the 30th of July, normal high temperatures 97 degrees, and that ends on the, the 17th. So the 30th through the 16th, the normal high temperature is 97, 96, and so it will drop down there. But then just two weeks later, uh, approximately on the 1st of September, down to 94, and just two weeks after that, it drops off down to 90. That's the average high temperature. So once it peaks, it does start to drop off fairly quickly historically, obviously, but then just think back to 2005. We'll forget about that. How does time remember that? Yeah, had to yeah. bring it up. <laughs> I had to bring it up. <laughs> September the 5th. Anyway, um, hottest day ever here in town. We do have our few uh, clouds out there this morning. Watch out. We will probably have a little bit of a kind of that Saharan dust around. There were some over the weekend, and uh, so it's going to be sort of that fuzzy looking sun out there at times, especially as it starts to go down. High temperature yesterday, 93. Yes, it was hotter, the hottest temperature we've had uh, for about the past uh, six, seven days, but Still not quite up to par. A few triple digits out there. And later on today, it is going to be getting hotter out there. We are looking at mid and even some upper 90s in and around the area. So just uh, lots of shade, lots of water, lots of sunscreen. And we will have a bit of a heat index to deal with, with uh, heat index readings getting up into the upper 90s and even some low hundreds around there. So here's what's going on. What we have, the you know, we've had that low in place for the longest time. That sort of has uh, fizzled on out. And now the high starting to take over. However, there's another little disturbance, little wave that's going to be developing out here in the Gulf of Mexico, and that's going to be just enough to give us that chance for a couple of showers around here, maybe along the coast uh, late Tuesday, but Wednesday as this works its way across here. It's not a very good chance of rain, but at least there's a, a small chance for it. Then after that, this high is just going to continue to take over and kind of sit down on top of us. And that's when we really start to heat up is when that thing just kind of sits there and pushes down in the atmosphere. And that's why we're going to be looking at temperatures getting back up to or even above normal as we go in toward the the first of August 89 degrees today at noon partly cloudy skies high temperature then is going to make it up to 95 plenty of sunshine out there 
tomorrow. More of the same. That small, small chance for a couple of showers on Wednesday, and then it is going to start to heat up going in toward the end of the week and the weekend. Thank you, Mike. Right now it's 650, about 77 degrees. Not everyone who brought a new pet home this past year thought about how to pet proof their homes. Tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to look at a few ways to protect your new pets while also keeping your home looking new. Outside with live cam, we're going to wrap up GMSA coming up after this break. Stick around. We'll be right back. Good morning. Coming up here on a Monday on GMA, the latest from Tokyo, the U.S. adding to its metal collection and the duel in the pool. Katie Ledecky's new rivalry for the ages. We are there live and talking to one of the young women who's making history. That and so much more coming up right here on GMA. A 13 year old was shot in alleged drive by shooting last night in the city's east side. Good morning. I'm Sarah Acosta. Police say they were called out to the 1200 block of South Olive Street just after 11 last night. When they arrived, they found a 13 year old male who had been shot in the shoulder. Police were able to talk to the teen who told police he was in front of a nearby school when a car drove up and shot at him. The problem, police couldn't find a crime scene. Investigators say no shell casings or other evidence was found in the area where the teen told police he was shot. Police say there were three other people with the teen when the alleged drive by shooting happened. Police took them into custody to question them about the shooting. Police continue to search for a suspect this morning. From downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Coming up on GMS at 9, SAISD gearing up for back to school with their summer jump start programs. Today, SAISD is rolling into reading and making a special drop off in partnership with the SAISD Foundation's Book Buddies program. Alicia Barrera spoke to students and asked the story in a live report coming up today on GMSA at 9. For now, let's go ahead and check in with Steven about the headaches on the roadways right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely headaches for drivers who are going to be here off I-10 at ProBand. We've been talking about this all morning long. Uh, just taking a look here at traffic. It almost looks like a still image not moving very fast right now, and that is because we do have some construction that is going to be causing these big delays. Uh, take a look here at our map. Seven miles per hour right now off westbound lanes of I-10 at ProBand. Seeing another big slowdown here off 35 here at FM 3009. Uh, you can see traffic moving there at 12 miles per hour. So again, that seems to be the big issue right now. But of course, we're going to be keeping a close eye on any bumps you bill can expect. We are seeing seeing a little bit of some clearing out there, but uh, still kind of that hazy look and also seeing some uh, some fog visibility has dropped down in a couple of spots, especially around Pleasanton. Hondo's now at six miles visibility. You Valley dropped down and LaGrange is still fairly thick. So just watch out and even going down around Beeville, watch out for a little bit of fog this morning. Lots of humidity temperatures in the mid 70s, 95 for a high temperature later on today. Maybe a couple of showers on Wednesday, but other than that, it's just going to continue to heat up as we finish July. Thank you guys. Yeah, thanks for joining us today. Have a great Monday and we'll see you back here at nine. Thank you.